about this case. That's that next on the Night Beat. One man facing charges after a one year old was sent to the hospital with fractured ribs and lacerated organs. Now we're going to show you a mugshot here. This is 19 year old Ricky Beloops. He's charged with injury to a child causing serious bodily injury. Investigators say that this happened on September 17th and the arrest affidavit st says that Beloops was babysitting and told the child's mother that the baby was crying uncontrollably. So EMS came checked in on the baby and then after they left the affidavit states that the child started vomiting eventually the baby's grandmother took that child to the hospital and that's where doctors found the extent of that child's injuries now billy Upes is in jail and his bond is set at 100 grand and new tonight, Northside ISD is scrambling to make plans for tomorrow's bus routes. The district says thieves stole catalytic converters from 16 of their minibuses overnight. It happened at the North Transportation Station on Hausman. The theft meant multiple bus routes were delayed this morning. The district says they now have other vehicles designated to run the routes for the time being. The thefts, by the way, going to cost that district about $24,000 in repairs. Police have said thieves target those parts, the catalytic converters, to sell the precious metals that are actually inside of them. And this isn't the only district hit up by thieves. Just last year, the San Antonio Independent School District says 20 of their fleet vehicles were affected. The district had since started spray painting those converters a bright orange and inscribing SAISD on them to tip off the salvage yards. And in a separate case, just last night, police say a man confronted someone trying to steal his catalytic converter off his vehicle. Officers say that suspect then shot the man. It happened at an apartment complex on Enoch Walk just after midnight. That suspect is still on the run. By the way, police encourage you to park in well lit areas, use a car alarm and engrave the VIN number right onto the catalytic converter. We also found out about a special plate that can kind of get in the way of these thieves. We have that story online on ksat.com. In other news tonight, officials at the headquarters for the Democratic Party in Kamal County say that they were the victims of vandalism. The New Braunfels Police Department says that they received the call about the case this morning. The report was filed online, so a police officer is still in the middle of reviewing the case. Investigators say that they're going to need to gather any potential evidence in order to keep this case going. Of course, we're going to keep you updated once we find out more information. Sky 12 tonight over the San Pedro Creek Park. Part of the uh, greenway that's been going on there. And uh, man, it's a beautiful shot. Nice I think shot. that's right off of 35 through downtown. Yeah, you don't see Very too many nice. cars there right now. Uh, 47 degrees right now. Adam Kasky, tell us what else we're in store. What's in store? More ups and downs in terms of temperatures. Another cold front is on the way. And tonight, you know where it's going to be a cool night. A dry stretch of weather gradually warming through Friday. Then our next cold front hits early Saturday morning. We're talking before sunrise on Saturday. So most of you probably won't even be awake for it. Now, earlier today, we were greeted by a little bit of frozen precipitation in parts of town. Very briefly, a little bit of sleet mixed in with a little bit of grapple as well. Most of it was sleet, though. Very different than hail. I know a lot of people mistaken sleet for hail, which is common, but they're formed very differently. Sleet is just a liquid raindrop that happens to freeze into ice as it travels toward the ground and hail is formed in thunderstorms by a, by a very different process. But this is brief and just kind of a little gee whiz factor out there earlier today. Looking at the satellite and radar across the state, especially right in the central part of te Texas between I-20 and I-10, you saw a lot of radar activity. It was a little misleading today, though, because a lot of this was actually just very light in nature, even though you see the reds, the oranges, and the yellows, which would typically indicate heavy precipitation. A lot of what we saw here was the radar detecting melting precipitation. So snowflakes and ice melting, which then gives it this big bright display on the radar screen, but really not much moisture was picked up from this activity as it moved through not just our neck of the woods, but other locations north of us around Lake L LBJ. They actually had some accumulations of up to a half an inch, but otherwise it was a tenth of an inch or less for most folks, even less than that. So upper disturbance and even a little jet streak associated with it moving out of here. There is a weak disturbance right on its heels 
near El Paso. That's going to slide southward tomorrow and just gradually clear our sky. So here's a look at our future cast. The precipitation, it's all gone. I wish I could tell you we had good rain chances in the forecast. Unfortunately, we just don't. We've got 0% for the foreseeable future. Low clouds to start the day tomorrow, and then we'll be clearing gradually from the north to south. So those of you in the hill country, you'll clear late morning, locally around Bear County, surrounding counties, probably around the early afternoon. And then those of you farther south of town, I mean, we're talking Carrizo Springs, Crystal City, Catula, Tilden Fowlerton, you'll clear later on in the afternoon. So just gradual clearing throughout the day tomorrow. And again, I'm sorry, rain chances not looking good from here on out. They added up to a hundredth of an inch today at the airport. 37 this morning, then a high temperature of 49, so unseasonably cool. Right now, we're at 47. Temperatures gradually falling off. This deck of clouds acting like a bit of a blanket, so temperatures just slowly drop and really don't fall off quickly. Cincinnati now 52, 48 Hondo, 44 in Canyon Lake. 47 in Uvalde at the freezing point in Ozona, but junction at 41. And tomorrow morning, most of us in the mid and upper 30s. That's along and west of I-35. But you get closer to the Gulf Coastline, a little bit more moisture in the air, and you'll be well into the 40s, Beeville, Victoria, Goliad areas. But by tomorrow afternoon, 60s. We're talking mid 60s. Then Thursday and Friday, low 70s, only to see another cold front hit and drop us into the 50s for pretty much the whole day Saturday. And by the way, the wind will be a factor in your day Saturday. You're not going to notice the wind until this weekend. By Saturday with that cold front, it's going to be gusting up to about 45 miles per hour. But just light and variable tomorrow, becoming sunny, temperatures making it into the 60s. Again, you're not going to notice the breeze until we get into Saturday. And behind that Saturday cold front, we are expecting now a light freeze by Sunday morning, maybe even Monday morning as well. The roller coaster continues. Jeez, indeed. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys. Jerry Jones has a certain number in mind. He's expecting a certain <laughs> amount of fans to be at the AT&T Stadium. He How many? does have the largest stadium in the NFL, and when you factor in the standing room only areas, which is in each of the end zone, very large area, he wants to see, we'll let you know, <laughs> Jerry Jones. <laughs> was expecting a very large crowd for the first playoff game since 2018. What are the numbers he's looking at? He will tell us when we come back. And are the Cowboys healthy to start the playoffs? That's the biggest question coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys prepare to host the San Francisco 49ers to kick off the NFL playoffs. So the Cowboys will be only three-point favorites against the six-seeded team. Since opening in May of 2009, the Cowboys AT&T Stadium has hosted four playoff games, the largest attendance announced at over 94,000. That was for the Seattle Seahawks back in 2018. But keep in mind, with standing room only, the stadium has the capacity of over 105,000, which they hit in the home opener for the 2009 season against the Giants. That's more like what Cowboys owner Jerry Jones wants to see when asked about it today in his weekly radio show in Dallas. It'll be Cowboys home game. There's no question about it. Home playoff game. And it'll be roaring. When that when that bunch uh, cranks up and when you have 90-something thousand people, uh, I was trying to look at it. You know, we have to limit what we can put on our uh, standing room only out there. We have to limit that amount. But uh, I'd like to push that 100,000 this week. There you go. Now the question is just how healthy will the Cowboys be for the first playoff game since 2018? Remember, star rookie linebacker Michael Parsons had to miss the regular season finale against the Eagles after he tested positive for COVID-19, along with left tackle Tyron Smith and cornerback Anthony Brown. And even though we never heard if cornerback Trevon Diggs ever tested positive, he also missed the Eagles game due to an illness. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy gave us this update on who will be back for the start of the postseason. Between today and tomorrow, we'll, we will start to bring a number of our guys off. So I, I think the goal is to have everybody back by Thursday. I think we have we have uh, J. Ron is probably the only one that may be a little longer. So exactly who's coming off today and who's tomorrow, I don't have it here in front of me. But I, I know definitely by Wednesday morning when we get together, we, we should be in really good shape. All right, Joe Judge became the latest coaching casualty in the NFL today after the New York Giants decided to fire him after only two seasons, two losing seasons. Judge, who was a first-time head coach, went 10 and 23 in two years, now becomes the third consecutive Giants coach to be fired after two seasons or less. Judge now becomes the seventh NFL coach to lose their job during the 2021 season. And it should not be a surprise about Dallas defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore's names have been mentioned regarding some of those vacancies. 
Our San Antonio Spurs will return home following their worst road trip of the season, going just one and six on their second longest road trip of the year, second only to the rodeo road trip coming up next month. The lone victory was on January the 5th over the Celtics in Boston, 99-97, and DeJounte Murray's first game back after being sidelined for five games in the NBA's health and safety protocols. The Spurs wanted to manage his minutes, but could not afford to do that as he scored 22 points in 33 minutes, including the last second defensive stand to prevent Boston from tying the game. There is no question that Murray belongs to be an NBA All-Star this season, but following the 111-96 loss of the Knicks last night in New York, the Spurs are on pace to win just 30 games this season. He's had an All-Star year. It's just that, you know, if your team doesn't have a, a good record, it works against you, and there are a lot of good point guards in the West. So uh, what he's concerned with is steady improvement, which he's done both, you know, technically on the court and leadership wise. He's been great. You know, I, there was no way I could keep him off the court tonight. You know, I don't know. We've been on the road, I don't even know, 13 days, 12 days, something like that. And this was five and seven nights, and he wouldn't even think about it. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to play. That's just who he is. So the Spurs will be at home 11 of the next 13 games, including seven in a row starting tomorrow against Houston, followed up by Friday against Cleveland, Saturday the Clippers, Monday Phoenix, and the following week on Wednesday against Oklahoma, Brooklyn, and then Philadelphia on the following Sunday. That's the only early tip time, 6 p.m. New National College Football Champions take over after 40 years of the making next. The Georgia Bulldogs are the new college football playoff national champions. That's what they were able to beat Alabama 33 to 18 in Indianapolis last night. It's the first national title football for Georgia since 1980 when Herschel Walker was a freshman. It's the first time the Bulldogs have actually beaten Bama after seven straight losses and included this year's SEC championship. It was a battle of field goals in the first half, wound up the Crimson Tide leading 96 to the break, and then the controversy when the Dogs leading 13 to 12 when officials ruled this was a fumble when Stetson Bennett was being brought down and the ball recovered by Brian Branch as he went out of bounds. That set up a three-yard touchdown from Bryce Young to Cameron Latou to push the tide out in front, 18-13. After that, it was all Georgia. Stetson Bennett would throw two more touchdowns, then with less than a minute to play, Keely Ringo intercepts this pass and brings it all the way back. This is a 79-yard pick six starting right here, and Georgia wins at 33-18. Bama is a world-class caliber team, and um, I can't really talk for Coach Smart what with him and Nick Saban, but um, we, we knew that Bama, Bama's always been at the top, and to you know to be the team at the top is really something surreal. Um, you know, it's it's something that goes down in history. It was kind of interesting last night because on the side channel during the game, ESPN was broadcasting. They actually had Jimbo Fisher and the Aggie staff watching the game with everybody else, really? and of course he was the first assistant to defeat uh, Nick Saban, and now Kirby Smart's the second. Interesting. How about that? Smart won a national championship when he did it, though. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big difference, yeah. We'll be right back after this.